Hello, in this video I'd like to look at the King's List and uh, focus will be on Temple of Seti I at Abydos, which is around about the 13th century BC. And there we have this famous King's List which gets um, a majority of the attention. But there's also another very important King's List and that's the Turin King's List, sometimes referred to as the Turin Canon. And that has a very, fr from about the same era, and also corresponds to the kings in there as well. But back to the king's list of uh, temple of Seti the first temple in Abydos, and the first king is listed as Nama, or sometimes referred to as Menes. These are said to be both the first kings, but there's some unusual aspects of that. So, for instance, if we go back to the Palermo stone or the royal annals, that lists Nama as or li lists Menes as the first king of the first dynasty and Nama as a king previous to that. Nama, uh, such as in the Nama palette, is usually referred to or sometimes often just put lumped together Nama and Menes as the first king to unify Upper and Lower Egypt. However, there are some curiosities in regards to these kings lists. So, for instance, the Palomo Stone, the Royal Annals, has Nama first and we also see King Scorpio and the some very similar interesting hieroglyphs and also have the fact that the uh, hieroglyphs were developed and but even if King Nama was the first to unite Lower and Upper Egypt that's a huge territory that's a very sophisticated administration but prior to King Scorpio King Scorpion or Scorpion 2 we have King Ka and there are artifacts to back this up but now we'll go back to the Temple of Seti the first at Ab Abydos and the King's List there and look at some video from uh, Nature TV Speakers Corner London channel, link will be in the description and here he visits the temple, I've used some of his footage in regards to Sheset but uh, we'll be looking especially at the King's List here at Temple of Seti the First Abydos around about the 13th century BC. Oh this is a nice breath of fresh air. Yeah, this is the gallery list. This is the King's List? Yeah, King's List. Oh yeah, I'll be looking yeah. forward to this one. Yeah. Oh. All of this is 76 uh, kings here, yeah. except five. Oh. It's not here. Yeah. Hatshepsut, uh, Tutankhamun, Akhenaton, I, and Semenkara. Uh, yeah, this nice five one. is not here. So starting from here, from Mina. From Bob. Mina. Mina, is that yeah. Nama, Nama? Yeah, Nama. Yeah, so uh, Nama, yeah. Nama. Yeah, so, yeah. so Nama. So the King's List at the uh, Temple of Seti I at Abydos, 13th century BC, written some thousand years after the fall of the uh, Old Kingdom, but we have Menes or Nama usually lumped in there together, so that's said to be the first king of a uh, united Egypt. However, again, the Palermo Stone or the Royal Annals list Nama and Menes separately, but they also list these kings before Nama. Now, there are parts of the stone, Palermo Stone, missing, which would also indicate that there were kings previous to Scorpio, Scorpion the first, but we see Nama and Menes there. And now we'll just go back and carry on with that footage, and there's an interesting point in regards to that as well. I see Nama. So that's where it starts there, yeah, Nama. Nama, yeah. So from the first dynasty? Yeah. Oh, right. And then the first dynasty was 5,000 years ago? Uh-huh, yeah. Right. And then we get, then we, and then obviously, and this is Seti and yeah. Ramesses? Uh, yeah, Seti and Ramesses, his son. So the second? Yeah. Oh, so yeah, this is beautiful. This is the one. first, runs the second. Yeah, so can, can we find any? Yeah. That we know. Can we find any? Oh, no. yeah. I don't do. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Horn Head will be online. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ramesses. Yeah. Titi. The Narma Titi. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then. yeah. Yeah, they're all there. Titi, yeah. And... So this might be Ramesses around here somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and we have um, Amenophis, mm -hmm. Semwasarat, they're yeah. all on there. Uh -huh. Yeah. 
us. So there will be a copy of this sent out to all the gnomes. Mm -hmm. Sort of, and then, you know, they yeah. discovered a, yeah, a, a yeah, few of yeah, them. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, fabulous. Oh, breathtaking. Very nice, fabulous carving, you know. I only wish I could rest. So, because we, we get a, a, an offering, mm -hmm. we have two. So yeah. that means offering to the gods. Uh -huh. Is it or two, does it mean something more? Is it offering from the gods or to the gods? When you get two. No, this is all, if you, if you found it, it's all the same here. Yeah. The cartouche is here. It's just mm, like an introduction. Mm. It's just the cartouche. Mm. The artwork's amazing, yeah? The artwork. Mm -hmm. And is this, what's this one, is this repeated or No, the, this is not, uh, just... Uh, Nothing to do with the king. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, 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 before I go on, I'd just like to indicate that I'm not putting anything disparaging on the tour guide. That's how they make their living and they need to be very careful about what they say and they could lose their living if they were to upset certain establishment or, or, or authorities in there. So just indicate that I, I, I would offer all sorts of apologies and, and reasons why it was important for these tour guides whose living comes from this to say that there is nothing to do of importance on this side of the hallway, this passage here. Because on one side, on the right side, we see the King's List, which begins from Nama onwards. But actually what we have on the other side is what's uh, sometimes referred to as the first time or the first occurrence or Zep Tepi, this ancient time. Now, the 3rd century BC uh, Egyptian priest who wrote down Egyptian history for the Ptolemaic or the Greek era, uh, Manifo, he mentioned a time before the kings, uh, so let's just call it a mythical time where the gods ruled Egypt. Now that would put Egyptian history uh, up to 25,000 years old by some counts, but it's also mentioned in the Turin king list that there is this history long before King Nama and these other kings so that's an important uh, feature now I think that you know yeah we have to be careful though because even way it's described as the time of the gods so for instance there are kings list from Sumeria who would put history back 430,000 years and it's just if you see the kings list it's uh, the, the perfect numbers the harmonic numbers so we, I think we should take it with a grain of salt, I'm not going to say dismiss it entirely, but take it with a grain of salt because uh, you'll find in many other cultures, if we look at other cultures for, well, you, uh, whether it's, you know, if you want to look at the Bible and Adam and Eve and Enoch and, uh, living and uh, Methuselah living for 800 years, this type of thing, but you'll see the same in China and other places as well. So I think it's important not to dismiss it but it's also important to counterbalance it because uh, creation stories and they for their similarities across the time across the world there are also huge differences in them as well so this needs to be the similarities and differences do need to be balanced and whether we take all I don't want to uh, apologies for the word but mythology if we take that all literally uh, then we're going to have a big problem because there's a lot of discrepancies depending on your culture, your religion, etc. Uh, king is here, yeah. except five. Oh. is not here. Yeah. Hatshepsut, uh, Tutankhamun, Akhenaton, I, and 
semen semen cara. Yeah, this is not here. So starting from here, from Mina, from Bob. Mina. Mina, is that yeah. Nama, Nama? So there were five n known kings not included on the king's list at uh, Temple of Seti I at Abydos, including his Akhenaten. And it's worth noting that there are different depictions of Akhenaten, and not always in this stylized, genetically modified way, let's just call it. Uh, his wife Nefertiti, uh, famous for her beauty as well, both Akhenaten and Nefertiti were removed essentially from history of only a few surviving pieces. So for instance here at the Nichol Nicholson Museum in Sydney we have this piece of stone which includes Nefertiti's name on it. It was found trampled in the sands and lost and it's one of these few uh, surviving records to say that they did exist. There was, a, I'll, I'll explain towards the end, uh, who was probably most responsible for removing not only Akhenaten and Nefertiti, but also Tutankhamun, this famous, very famous pharaoh, who, the boy king as they call him, uh, most famous because of the treasures found in his tomb, but he was either the son or the grandson of Akhenaten. There was a little bit of if, ifs and buts uh, exactly who he was, but also the female pharaoh, Hepshetsut, is not included on the king's list and we'll have a look in a piece of video from Ray Tours Egypt where he visits the Karnak temple because Hepshetsut also built uh, one of these giant obelisks. Most of the obelisks, the vast majority of them were actually built during and moved or of a big statue such as the Ramesseum were moved in the late kingdom. Uh, so the big heavy moves of Egypt were done during the late kingdom uh, a little bit before, during and a little bit after Ramesses was yeah, when most of his big heavy lifting was done. But uh, there we see Hapshetsut dressed as a male emperor doing the stretching the cord ceremony to establish a new temple there with Sheset. And this is an um, important feature in regards to recent videos. But now we'll have a look at a clip of video and how Hapshetsut's obelisk was not destroyed but obscured. Here, as we mentioned, we have two obelisks standing. And the third one, as we mentioned, broke. The first one, it is done by the king Tutmosis number one, and the hieroglyphic on this one telling us about his name and his achievement. Wow, the second one behind, the second one behind, if you got closer. Cheers, thanks very much. Eh? Cheers, thank you. So, no, nice one. I was lost, you know. Yeah. Who's that? The second one behind the wall, guys, it is done by the Queen Hatshepsut, as you see, right? And the whole information that I gave you to the Apollos, it's been written in the Apollos of the Queen Hatshepsut. Even Tutmosis number three had a stepson. He'd been damaged everything to the Queen Hatshepsut, but he can't damage the Apollos because the Apollos is referring to the god, not referring to her. But he said enough to build a wall in the front of the Apollos to hide the Apollos of the Queen Hatshepsut, but he can't damage the Apollos. Okay, so we saw there Hapshetsut's obelisk at Karnak. A wall was built to obscure her name, but because of the obelisk being very rare, you know, over the long, long history of Egypt, there was only a small number of obelisks, and most of them were done at uh, quite uh, a later time uh, in regards to the stone cutting and moving technology, but that's a separate uh, topic. But who was most responsible, or at least the, the main suspect for rubbing out Akhenaten's name, destroying Nefertiti, destroying the temples, the um, mansions of the Benben, as they were called, next to the Karnak complex. And it probably was Haremheb, who was a scribe underneath Tutankhamun, also underneath King I, both of them, Tutankhamun, I, Hapshetsut, Akhenaten, and uh, Semen, uh, Sem Semenkara, removed from the, from the king's list. Well. Haram Hab we see, was a high official there. We see him in this very typical depiction where the high, the, the high official, the chief of the scribes, is shown to be rather plump and rich and wealthy and powerful. This is plumpness, fatness being a symbol of, of wealth and power. However, Haram Hab, who was served under Tutankhamun, then underneath King I, went on to become the king himself. And there we see, so when he is depicted as a pharaoh, He's now shown in this much more youthful, strong, powerful sense as opposed to a you know, beer belly type of uh, depiction. And as I mentioned in a previous episode, one of the heresies of 
Akhenaten was that he depicted himself more like the scribe with the large breasts and the, and the large belly as where there are all pharaohs were depicted as to be young, slim and strong. This is, was a standard throughout but Akhenaten amongst his other heresies such as setting up a monotheistic uh, religion breaking up the power established power of the priests and probably the nobles as well but uh, it, it was here Horemheb sorry for I've pr did a misspell just corrected it there or um, Haremheb who was most likely responsible and at least l some evidence to suggest that he was uh, at least the instigator for a lot of this removing certain people, Hapshetsud, Akhenaten, Tutankhamun, I, Samankara, from history. So just to go through the king, now I'll put some links in the description to other, some info on kings lists. Um, you can look up the Turin kings list, you know, the power of Google, um, or the Palermo stone as well, which has this very old kings list, which includes pre-dynastic kings in them as well. So with that, hope you enjoyed and uh, have a good one. <laughs>